great Roman historian Livy relates that after the Battle of Cannae, the Carthaginian general Maharbal suggested Hannibal should lay siege to Rome, especially since the road to Rome was effectively open. But Hannibal declined. One major problem that still plagued Hannibal was reinforcements. He had been hoping to get at least some supplies from his base in Spain, but this became problematic given the Scipio's successes in Iberia. And Carthage itself never fully came to Hannibal's aid despite Hannibal's increasingly success story in Italy. Had Carthage even met Hannibal halfway, undoubtedly this war would have turned out very differently. Thus it was imperative that Hannibal acquire as many allies as he could in Italy in the surrounding areas. And so Hannibal preoccupied much of his time with switching the loyalties of Rome's allies. And although many still stayed loyal, even after Hannibal's third major victory, he did succeed in convincing some large cities to join his cause. The most notable being Capua. Capua was the most important city in the coastal province of Campania. And perhaps even more importantly, Hannibal concluded a treaty with Macedon. King Philip promised to land an army in Italy, which could open up another front against Rome. In addition, the new ruler of Syracuse even sided with Hannibal. Hannibal now had alliances with the two most powerful entities in Greece and Sicily. Despite this, many cities in Italy stayed the course with Rome. And this fact alone prevented the fall of Rome. Livy states an amazing fact, quote, not one Roman citizen nor one Latin community had joined Hannibal, end quote. Think about that for a minute. Not one Roman citizen joined up with Hannibal. Now that is loyalty. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, Rome refused to negotiate. There would be no peace. Instead, the Senate put Rome on a total war footing. A new dictator was elected and four new emergency legions were raised two of which would serve as a garrison for Rome. The Roman troops that escaped Cannae were also reorganized into cohesive legions at Canusium. And with Hannibal's decision not to storm Rome, there was at least a little breathing room for the Senate. And even more importantly, the morale of the army was restored. It was brought back from the brink, most notably by the will of the Senate, but even more importantly by the citizens of Rome. It is amazing that with all the legions Hannibal destroyed, the Romans simply kept creating new ones. It is a reminder of the vast numbers Hannibal faced going up against the strongest military in the ancient world. How many more legions would Hannibal have to destroy before another one appeared on the horizon? I am reminded of the situations the Germans faced in 1941 against the Red Army. The Germans killed, captured, or wounded six million Red Army soldiers in that first year. And yet, for every division the Germans wiped out, a new one was quickly raised by the Soviets. In any event, I digress. Now the Roman Senate was most concerned about the defection of Syracuse. Losing Sicily would be a disaster for Rome, and so the Senate immediately dispatched the bulk of the Roman navy to protect the coast of Sicily from a Carthaginian invasion. Also, Varro finally returned to Rome and took complete responsibility for the disaster at Cannae. Actually, he was treated quite leniently and even returned to service for the Roman army. Meanwhile, Hannibal now decided to secure some of his holdings in southern Italy. Towns in Samnium, Brutium, and Lucania were seized and supplies secured. But Hannibal was most interested in Capania. Although Capua pledged support, there were several other towns that held out. The most notable holdout was the city of Neapolis. If Neapolis could be taken, Hannibal could acquire a major seaport on the Italian coastline. But the city's defenses and walls proved to be too much, and the Romans were able to install a strong garrison in the city. This only highlighted the problem Hannibal had with sieges. He simply could not afford to sit around and execute lengthy sieges in major areas. Hannibal always seemed to prefer open battle as the first resort. Meanwhile, in Rome itself, a new general emerged, Marcellus. Marcellus had conducted several successful campaigns against the Gauls, and as it turned out, he was just the man to take on Hannibal. He was a strong military general, but he also wasn't reckless as some of the previous consuls had been against Hannibal. He was in every sense a worthy successor to Fabius. Marcellus was able to gather up all the Roman legions, including the remnants from Cannae, into a force that unbelievably was still larger than anything Hannibal possessed. Meanwhile, Hannibal dispatched Mago to Carthage to plead for reinforcements. Amazingly, the Senate refused and decided to send all the reinforcements to Spain of all places. This was mainly the result of Hannibal's greatest enemy in the Senate, Hanno. It is amazing throughout human history how political divisions can ruin great things that might have been. A lesson that we can certainly learn from in today's political environment. 
Rome, on the other hand, did not suffer from such petty political divisions. Rivalries were set aside for the greater good of the Roman Republic. And that was the ultimate goal. Defeat Hannibal at all costs. Now, as I mentioned before, Capua joined Hannibal. But a town just to the east did not. And this was the town of Nola. Although the government in Nola maintained loyalty to Rome, the general population did not. They wanted to hand over the city gates to Hannibal. Livy states that the populace did not want to see their surrounding farmlands destroyed by Hannibal. Well, I can't exactly blame them for that. Hannibal decided to take advantage of the situation and encamped just outside of Nola. The government in Nola decided to appeal to Marcellus, who was encamped at Casalinum. In an attempt to keep the city's populace loyal, Marcellus actually was able to march his army right up to Nola and garrison the city. With the arrival of the Roman army, Hannibal decided to break camp and take another shot at Neapolis. But Hannibal soon discovered that more Roman troops had arrived there. And so he raised a few towns in the surrounding countryside and made his way back to Nola. Hannibal had the better of the situation since he controlled the entire countryside, and therefore had Marcellus effectively surrounded at Nola. Even inside the city itself, Marcellus faced problems, as the populace was on the verge of a revolt. Marcellus spent much of his time trying to sway some of the city's leaders to his side, but still the situation was dangerous. And now with Hannibal camped just outside the city's gates, there was mortal danger to the Roman army inside Nola. Marcellus decided he could not risk waiting and formed up his troops into three units, but he refused to give the order to advance out. Instead, he divided his troops among three main gates. Marcellus placed his strongest forces at the main gate. He also placed the Roman cavalry there. He also refused to allow the populace near the walls or the gate, and a special task force was created to ensure the citizens did not disturb his Roman legions. And so they waited in silence at the city's gates. Hannibal too was drawn up in anticipation of the coming battle. But surprisingly, the Romans refused to come out to meet. Hannibal remained in formation for days. Finally, Hannibal had enough and decided to launch an attack. Hannibal was convinced that if he launched an attack against the main gate, this would encourage the populace to revolt, thus sealing the fate of Marcellus. And so Hannibal personally sent his light troops against the main gate, along with smaller detachments to the other two gates. But as Hannibal neared the gate, Marcellus ordered the gate to be flung open and launched a surprise attack against Hannibal, tossing in every available soldier. Although the Carthaginians initially suffered several casualties, Hannibal was soon able to restore order and the Carthaginians successfully retreated back to camp. Hannibal must have surely realized by now he was dealing with no ordinary Roman commander in Marcellus. And quite amazingly, Marcellus had pulled off an elaborate ruse against the master of deception, Hannibal. And so Marcellus was able to save Nola. He also crushed the opposition inside Nola that had supported Hannibal. He conducted an investigation and 70 Nolan citizens were found guilty of conspiring with the enemy and were promptly executed. And with this, Hannibal gave up on taking Nola and moved on to raise other towns and cities. Marcellus, however, didn't let this minor victory go to his head. And so he still exercised great caution against Hannibal. He would allow some cities to be raised, but was determined not to let the larger ones like Neapolis and Nola fall. He therefore set up his headquarters in the hills above Soisala. Here he could maintain a strong defensive position while also keeping an ever watchful eye on Hannibal's movements in the plain of Campania. Hannibal now received word that another large Roman army was moving toward Casalinum. Now, this presented a problem for Hannibal, given that city's close proximity to Capua. Also, the city controlled the main road that connected Capua and Rome. Its strategic importance made it imperative for Hannibal to seize the city, either by friendship or by siege, if that became necessary. In the end, the city already contained a Roman garrison and was inclined to hold out against Hannibal. The city was located right against the northern bank of the Volturnus River, and this gave it a natural line of defense. The river was situated in such a way that Hannibal could only attack a small portion of the wall. This gave the defenders a main point at which they could concentrate their defenses. So for now, Hannibal was content to control the southern side of the river and set up a siege of starvation rather than storming the city itself. Hannibal then retired with the rest of his army to Capua for winter quarters in January of 215 BC. It was now five months after his titanic victory at Cannae in August of 216 BC. As the winter months rolled on, Casalinum began to suffer from severe famine. Although the Romans were desperate to keep the city supplied, the Carthaginians were equally determined to block any provisions from reaching the city. Finally, the garrison could hold out no longer. 
Hannibal, after receiving a lucrative payment, allowed the garrison safe passage. Hannibal then handed over the city to Capua, but also left a garrison in place, given its strategic importance. 